Uh, moving right along then, let me, let me begin our lecture series uh, and this morning's presentations by introducing uh, our first speaker. And I don't want to take away anything that these speakers are going to talk about, but we're going to be talking about the last 40 years of research as our, as our basic theme this morning. And our first speaker is uh, Richard Rangham. He is a uh, primate uh, behavioral ecologist, and the, the uh, title of his speech is The Inspirational Chimpanzee, How Four Decades of Research has changed our view of humanity. And he is uh, considered one of the pioneers of the study of chimp self-medication. Dr. Richard Rangham. Uh, thank you, Ira. I turned off my machine. I'm already stunned. And uh, the challenge of being polite all day just seems <laughs> too much to me. But, but at least I can begin by uh, saying that I, Leaky Foundation is um, far and away my favorite foundation. It's just uh, fantastic that you've brought everybody here for this occasion. And um, what a wonderful opportunity to uh, honor Jane Goodall and Toshisada Nishida. Um, I guess at some point I'd like to have a slide up here. Well, thank you. So, uh, the uh, foundation asked me to, to uh, uh, talk about this topic and uh, obviously want to begin by thinking about why Lewis Leakey is so happy. <laughs> and the answer actually is that the program that he initiated worked. We have learned a lot about our past from uh, studying the great apes. Uh, he would have been just totally ecstatic to know what Jane and Toshi and uh, the many other people who studied apes have discovered. But I want to go back to this question of, of what it is that we have learned by uh, going to uh, the sort of issue that is at the polar opposite of the way that we in the Leakey Foundation tend to think about things. Here is this quote from just uh, a few years ago, five years ago, from a very distinguished uh, sociobiologist and behavioral ecologist, David Barish. And uh, he is saying that phylogeny doesn't seem important at all. This was in a review of a book called Tree of Origin, in which uh, several of us here contributed. And he is saying phylogeny seems remarkably unimportant. Those great apes, they don't matter. In fact, he's saying, whether human beings carry a significant primate legacy at all when it comes to behavior is a severe open question. Now, not many people think like he does, but he's a distinguished guy who's representing a view that is reasonably common. What he's saying is that clearly physically we are primates and behaviorally we are animals in the sense that we follow the rules of kin selection. We follow the rules of maximizing our fitness through whatever behavioral strategies we can. But when it comes to our behavior, our primate heritage doesn't matter. This is where we came from 40 years ago, and it lingers still. And if you think I'm exaggerating, remember Ed Wilson's wonderful book on human nature? Anyone remember anything comparing humans and chimpanzees in that? You will not find it. What about this irony? Jared Diamond's magnificent book, The Third Chimpanzee. He spends the first two chapters saying, gee, you know what we just discovered? Chimpanzees and humans are each other's closest relatives. This is so, so significant. In the remainder of the book, there's no comparison in the behavior of chimpanzees and humans. So there really is a gap in thinking about where human-chimpanzee similarities can help us. And this is very surprising because in the study of primates, there's plenty of evidence that phylogenetic relationship, evolutionary relationship, really matters in terms of understanding the pattern of behavior. What we got here is a number of macaque species, and they're color-coded to represent similarities in their style of behavior. And uh, the, the good guys are the ones in green, and the bad guys are the ones in blue, and you see they're all related to each other. Phylogeny predicts behavior to a strong extent. And we can certainly see clear hints of this in the great apes. I mean, here we've got traditions of using tools, and uh, the great apes and humans show this more strikingly than um, uh, other primates on the whole. Now, I thought Carl Van Schaik was going to be here to talk about culture, so I'm not going to talk about it. 
Well, we'll talk about other things. But I first of all just want to remind us what the essential logic is about why it is that the chimpanzees are so interesting. And this is something that was not known, of course, 40 years ago. There was this general sense of, well, the apes are pretty close to humans, so they can probably tell us something. But we can be much more precise now because of the amazing discovery of the DNA tree, which is represented here, and since 1984 has become just totally solid. The astonishing fact that humans are more closely related to chimpanzees and bonobos than gorillas are. And what this is significant is that if you look down there, there are a bunch of big black hairy things. So those big black hairy things are those things, and it means that humans evolved from something that looked like one of them. If it was bigger, it would have been more gorilla-like. If it was smaller, it would have been more chimp-like. Gorillas are basically little more than a, a chimpanzee on steroids. And uh, so that means that we can reconstruct our, our last common ancestor. And we can say that it was one of those big black hairy things. It would have uh, walked on its knuckles like gorillas and chimpanzees and uh, lived in the rainforest and eat fruits and leaves and eventually come out uh, onto the savannas and begin the uh, lineage that led to humans. So that's why it's just so fascinating to use any behaviors that chimpanzees shows, show to think about the behavior of our uh, Australopithecine and uh, early human ancestors. That behavior uh, is understood from a wide range of sites. The studies launched by Jane and Toshi some 40 years ago have now become uh, some, uh, what, 15 long-term study sites, uh, many of which are shown here. There are still gaps. For those of you in the audience who would like to start a new study site, you can see some big gaps. Please see me afterwards. <laughs> so Jane spoke last night about uh, the impact of going to Gombe and learning that the chimpanzees show uh, so much that is instantly uh, similar to us uh, in terms of uh, their facial expressions, their uh, gestures, their social relationships, the intense bonds uh, as represented here on the left by uh, the extraordinary account that Jane has given us of uh, the death of Flint following the death of his mother, apparently from a broken heart when he was eight years old. And now it is already familiar that we have cultural traditions in uh, all of these different sites such that every site where chimpanzee has been studied, there is a different set of traditions. They each have their own unique culture. Some of them really matter, like the stone tool using uh, nut smashing traditions in West Africa, which can produce a significant proportion of the calories over the year. And some are totally trivial, like the hand clasp grooming, that uh, their signal function has still not been understood. But there are many other things as well. And, um, uh, let me just remind you that chimpanzees are extraordinarily ingenious. Jane and Toshi spoke last night about the chimpanzees that end up in sanctuaries because they've been orphaned. This is one of them. Uh, she's a juvenile called Yo-Yo. And Yo-Yo uh, here has been given a task which uh, I challenge you to see if you can solve. There is a tube strapped to the wires of this room. And uh, at the bottom of the tube, she can see some peanuts. She's never seen a task like this before. And uh, she's just been led into the room, and uh, if we start the video, we can see how she solves it. And if anyone can figure out how to do it uh, before she does, uh, then shout out the uh, answer. Could you uh, just click on the... Uh, thank you. So she tries brute force first. 